Blind Guy TV and today is the first opportunity I've had since coming out of hospital I've such a kidney transplant to uh, sit in my lovely old Lotus Europa twin cam bit of a struggle getting in <laughs> probably even worse trying to get out but anyway uh, I thought today people have been asking me why cars and uh, I thought I could reminisce about the old days of driving this very car back in the early 1980s. Um, my love of cars started at a very early age. My late mum had a photograph of me at the age of two, uh, sat on a go-kart in our garden. My, fa my father was Polish and in 1963 we went to Poland. On the way back, all I could think of was my, my go-kart. They were getting out of the car. I said, where's Andrew? Well, Andrew had already dashed up the driveway, opened the garage door, and was pedalling furiously his go-kart. Um, my father was Polish, like I said. He was a decorated Wellington bomber and Mosquito pilot in the Second World War. My mum's brother, Kenneth, and he lost his life over the North Sea. And he's, what do you, I think he bailed out of his bow fighter to an engined aircraft, engine failure. We think, as this is an aside, but we think we found his body. Um, I, w I went on a, a, a website which detailed airmen losses over the North Sea and we know he went down with his navigator Bill Kaplan over Scarborough Point in September 1942 and a few days later a body was found that was detailed on that website I was buried in Beverly Churchyard so quite a few years ago we took my mum my mum's best friend Auntie Claire I visited that churchyard and uh, in the corner of the churchyard was a airman's grave, American, German, Australian, you name it, and British. And one of them was to the unknown airman. So that was either my uncle Kenneth or his navigator Bill. Bill. Um, so everyone around me has always been into flying, been pilots, glider pilots, etc. Um, I couldn't, I was diabetic at the age of 10, so at that time I couldn't fly. And um, I took up cars and flew model aircraft for a good 10 years to the 1970s, but then found rallying, <laughs> went to the RAC. 1978 with a couple of mates and that started it all um, my first car I had was a dark red 1969 Ford Capri 1600 GT that was a bit rusty to be honest so I then bought a 128 Coupe Fiat brilliant little car front wheel drive probably drove like a Mini and at the same time I bought off my mate Keith uh, a rolling Mark one Escort shell, and my dad and I prepared it, and built a rally car out of it. Anyway, um, <laughs> it was about 1975, 76. I was about 14 or 15, and some friends had come up to Blackburn. They were friends of my mum and dad. It was Joseph and Phyllis, and they, he was an airman, a Polish airman. And in fact, they were the first. To, he was the first Polish uh, forces to marry an English woman in the Second World War. They'd come up to see mum and dad and they brought their son-in-law and daughter. And I didn't realise what car they'd come up in. It was only when they were leaving and it was pitch black and they sort of came down the driveway and I saw emerging 
a black and gold Lotus Europa twin cam special. I was gobsmacked. I didn't know which was the front end or the back end, to be honest, but it was just amazing. If I'd, ever, if I'd known it was there, I'd, of course, I'd, I'd, I'd had a good look at it, weren't you, on the daylight, but this spaceship emerging from around the house was just... <laughs> I'll never forget it. Never. He was. He looked a bit like Nigel Mansell, typical 1970s, long moustache. She was beautiful blonde. And uh, it just set the scene so well. So I had to have one. So, <clears throat> again, the culprit, Keith, he um, he found uh, a Europa for me in a local garage. It needed a lot of work. Uh, but it was in JPS colours. And it was this car. Everyone in the 1970s painted their lotuses in JPS colours. Originally, it came out of the factory yellow. So I remember going down to the garage, I think it was on a Sunday, it was shut, it was closed. And um, I could see it, and I just had to have it. So it was my 20, 21st birthday, mum and dad said if I sold the uh, Escort rally car, then they'd put the rest of the money to, which was quite a lot of money, I mean, uh, I got 850 for the, uh, by this time it was a Mexico rally car with big arches. And um, mum and dad, I think, put like 100 pounds to it, which was a lot of money. And I got this car. No tax, no MRT, no insurance. Drove it, drove it home in the dark so no one would realise. Broke it down, battery flat. I had to ask a, couple of, a young couple to bump start me. And uh, got it home, put it in the garage and drove in my dad's car to the fish and chip shop. I just sat in the driveway staring at this beautiful car in the garage eating my fish and chips. Anyway, uh, one incident. This, this car doesn't, I wouldn't say it handles, an escort handles, get it sideways really safely. This thing grips on for for life and death, but then let's go and they end up spinning. And um, Pete, if you're listening, I know you watch the channel. You remember this incident? Long dual carriageway, then a roundabout, and it's like a chicane almost down to the road to the fish and chip shop. And Pete had a Mini Cooper, so all, all souped up. He said, I could get around that roundabout at 60. And I said, I can do it at 70 in this. Well, we flew down a little carriageway. And it was only the last 100 yards. I thought, oh, God, it's raining. It wasn't just raining, it was pouring now. I touched the anchors and it went, um, yeah, it went 90 degrees to the right. So most people, so just put the brakes on and we we'll, we'll, we'll were in a bad accident because it was a big roundabout with chevrons on it and we would have probably one of the posts of the chevron would have cut the car in two. Remember it's all fine for us. Anyway, so we've got a nice degrees to the right. I accelerated, flipped the steering and got it 180 to the left and then again accelerated 180 to the right. So basically uh, wagging my tail and 180 degrees to the left, by which time I looked in my rear view mirror, I could see we were going sort of backwards down the road I wanted. I'd gone round the chicane, right, left, right, left, and uh, slammed on the anchors, got myself settled, stuck it in gear, drove to the chip fish and chip shop, and then started to shake like mad. <clears throat> Absolutely shaking, 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 shaking. Unbelievable. That learnt me a lesson. <laughs> yeah. They once told Pedro Rodriguez, I think it was um, Graham Hill, said, can someone tell Pedro that it's raining? Because he was a Reagan master. He loved the rain. Anyway, um, that 
evening, I think I was a Reagan master. Somehow I managed to get it round that roundabout, sideways, 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 sideways. Kept it under control and it was just when I saw there was no, nothing behind me, going down the correct road, slammed the brakes on, thought that's enough. Another incident, well, not much of an incident, I suppose, but there was, they were building the, house, the housing estate where I lived. And there was a JCB digger with its motor unit swung over the road, on the line of traffic. And I thought I'd get under there. <laughs> so I overtook everybody. I went under the motor unit. My area went, ding, 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 ding. So I've achieved another goal to go under a JCB digger. Oh, there you go. I'm only 21, for God's sake. And then I had problems with the back wheel. The left back wheel would not stay on. The problem was the nut was wrong-handed. So it was always trying to undo itself, no matter what you did. Dad and I even welded the ruddy thing on. Still broke. Came off. I, I bought, or my dad had bought, a, a new drive shaft from a uh, uh, loader specialist. That was £125. Lots of money. And it had something, someone had filed off some markings on it. Didn't think anything of it. My dad at the time had a Chrysler, a big Chrysler 2 litre. And he wanted something from the Chrysler dealer. So I went up to get it for him. And on the, just by the fluke, on the counter was a Hillman Imp Stiletto uh, workshop manual. And it was open at the rear axle pictures. I said to the guy, do you mind if I've, have you got one of those in stock? He said, yeah. I said, can I have a look at it? And he brought it out and it was exactly like the drive shaft I just bought, or that I just bought, for £125. And where the filings marks were on the Lotus item, on the Chrysler item, it said Roots Group. So the other, and that was, it was £12.50. So they put another zero on it. And I paid, or we paid £125. I could have gone up to the Chrysler garage and bought one for £12.50.